Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited, we're gonna use heaps of the makeup that I hauled in my Sephora sale haul video, which I will link down below. Stuff came from everywhere, but I just called it that anyway. So I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona Mini Beaver, I'm gonna use the Dior Air Flash, the Patrick Tarte She's Passionate, and a lot of the brushes that I spoke about in that video as well. So let's just get straight into it. I'm so excited. I am so sorry, I fixed my bung eye in a minute. I'll put a timestamp on the screen, but unfortunately for this first part of the video, my eye is very bung. <laughs> and it's a good day to test out um, what I'm hoping to be a relatively blurring full coverage foundation because I have a few spots. I was gonna try the um, YSL primer that I got at the same time, but I didn't wanna try a new primer and a new foundation at the same time. So I actually tried this off camera. I don't know, it's very silicone-y and then it's silicone-y with glitter in it. Why didn't I think gold flakes would be glitter? Like we all know I love glitter, but not in a primer. I like it on my eyelids, not all over my face. So I need to keep giving that a try, but so far I'm nervous. So I actually primed with my Napoleon Purtis Auto Pilot Primer today. And then I put my Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector on. So now we can jump in to the Dior Backstage Air Flash Foundation. I can't believe it's taken me this long to try this, but like I said in my haul video, the spray on it just kind of freaked me out. I'm gonna shake it up, and I've decided I'm not gonna spray it on my face. Well, at least not initially. I'm gonna spray it on. This is a coaster. I need to get a makeup palette, but what's the difference? Um, yeah, let's just... Let's just go straight ahead and pop this on. I'm literally nervous. Ooh. I don't know how much to use either. And I've decided I'm gonna use a sponge. So I'm gonna dip that in. Okay, so the sponge really picked a lot of that up. My beauty blender too wet. Hmm, two secs, I'm just gonna dry off my beauty blender even a little bit more. So I've sprayed even more. And I'm just gonna do my beauty blender again. Okay, that's a bit better. Before it was just like very diluted, but pretty sure it was just my um beauty blender that was too wet. Okay, the color match was good. Well done, Ash. I'm actually pretty, <laughs> like without turning my own heart, relatively good at matching my color. Like 15 years being the same colour. And I do, I always go a shade or two darker than my actual skin tone. Um, it's just about matching my tone for me, like the undertones. I'm a big believer if you wear like your actual, actual shade, I think there's very few people out there that wouldn't feel a little bit sickly if they match their actual shade. You sort of like put makeup on to look a little bit like healthier, don't you? So I think you need to add a little bit of color. Very smooth. My initial thought is that like this would probably have to be a special occasion makeup because I feel like I'm going to go through the product relatively quickly. Just because it seems like I'm spraying a lot out. I mean, it's really hard to tell because I don't have much, ex like any experience with foundations that come in aerosol. I feel like I'm using a lot and I feel like a lot is like dusting up back on me. Um, it's fragrance too, like the Dior fragrance, which, you know, we all know how I feel about that. It is really beautiful in the sense that it does not look cakey in the slightest bit, um, which is great, but it's not actually covering my blemishes. Um, this is what I find with luxury makeup. I'm, oh my God, my eye. Okay, I'm so sorry. You have to look at my bung eye for a few more minutes, but I just have put um, eye drops in it. I'm so sorry. I'm usually really good. I get bloodshot eyes like all the time. Um, I think I've explained this before. I have like sun damage in my eyes. Anyway, it's a whole thing, hopefully getting operated on this year. But what I was saying is my overall comment, and this goes for like most luxury makeup, is I always find it's more tinted than it is like actual coverage. So I'm just gonna try build this up a little bit. Ooh, that was quite cold. It gave me like a face freeze. I do feel like there's a light mist of makeup getting on all my things, which I'm really not here for. But that's my overall first impression so far, is that it is smooth. Um, it is a beautiful finish. I just, I want more coverage. But anyway, let's power through with the rest of my 
makeup now. Oh my god, my fucking drawer back here was open the whole time too. <laughs> I'm a mess today. Oh my gosh. So now we're going to try my Natasha Denona mini Bieber. Ooh. We all know Bieber is one of my definitely top, top eyeshadow palettes of all time. So I'm really excited to try this and I'm very excited that it's more in those peachy tone family. Pinky, rosy, peachy. It's like a there's like a place in between um peach and pink and it's this and i'm excited about it i'm gonna go in with plush first which is seems to be the lightest shade of the palette and i'm gonna load that up on my smith 237 now the funny thing about like pinkish shades <clears throat> is they can make your eyes look sore really really quickly Okay, so that shadow blended beautifully. I'm going to jump down to this shade now, which is Izzy. And I'm going to pop that on a tighter brush, which is the Smith 232, and tighter into the crease now. There's a little bit of pickup in the pan, but nothing drastic in my opinion. This shade looks different on the eye than how it looks in the pan. It's not cool, but it's throwing more coolish and i'm going to start to build up the outer third as well so that shade blended beautifully um my only comment is that it's it throws um a little bit of a mauvey purpley tone which i find so interesting which i did notice in her looks when like natasha denona's actual like marketing looks when she uses this palette so if you want a more peachy look don't use that shade and just use that shade um because now i don't know if it's going to match the blush as much as i wanted it to but the formula is beautiful and in hindsight i just shouldn't have used this color it's interesting how different it shows up on the eye than in zipan but any who's a base um i do want to like scarily use the um cream to powder formula i'm scared to use it but let's just use it because i want to give it a crack it's not the cream to powder formula isn't typically my favorite i'm going to use it on a packing brush reasons i haven't liked it in the past is it like crumbles it doesn't just give you um fall down it crumbles so let's pack it on the outer third with a packing brush and see how we go That is actually blending beautifully. That is so much better than the creamy mattes in um, Metropolis. Oh, damn. She has improved it. The people were right. So that cream to powder shade was called Wink. And now I'm going to go in with Bruno, which is the dark brown. And I'm just going to start to um, pack my lash line and out a third. Pretty much exactly like I did with that cream to powder shade. these shadows are blending so nicely now i'm going to take that same shade on a morphe m456 and just continue to build up the outer third a little bit okay so that blended really beautifully as well and i'm super excited for the next bit which is trying the shimmer the only thing i will say it's throwing a whole lot more cool tone-ish than i originally anticipated i should have known that because all her marketing footage looks exactly like how it's shown up on my eye and the funny thing is my camera hates cool tones it makes me look dead i am actually just going to use a finger for these because what i love most about natasha denona shadows is they never need dura line. Like it's so impressive. Nearly everything I use needs dura line when it comes to like a metallic or micro glitter. But hers never do, and it's so impressive. So I'm just gonna go straight in with my finger. How? How did she do that? Absolutely. Bloody stunning. But then I'm going to take another thing that I hauled in that video which was the Smith 253 and I like to when I'm applying lid shades to switch between a finger and a brush because I do think a finger is um 
the best way to apply them but you can't well I can't get a clean application like a nice neat lid application without doing a brush for the top bit I do prefer this brush for micro glitters than metallics but it's still working a bloody treat hands down she has the best metallic formula because I'm someone that I, metallics aren't my favorite but hers are just so impressive it's honestly amazing okay so I am going to finish off the rest of my face now do my lashes and then we'll come back to do the lower lash line together and try the Patrick Tarbot okay I lied I decided to do a faux wing and while I was doing that I remembered that I bought the 317 so let's Try this and see if it's comparable to my very lusted after 263 by MAC. So I'm going to grab the darkest shade in the palette again. Tap it off and let's have a go and see if it's the same. So I did just do my lower lash line because or else you see like two minutes of footage of me going like this. I just don't think anyone needs to see that. So what I did was I did all the same on the bottom as I did the top. So I started off with this shade, did this shade, did this shade, did this shade. And mainly focusing that on the outer perimeter of my eye and just reducing my brush size as I came closer and closer in. Now we're going to try the NARS Eater brush, which I'm so excited about. I'm going to use my Jaclyn Hill bronzer today in Golden Goddess. Um, I've said, whoa, it picked up a lot of products. Shit. Okay. Note to self. Be gentle. Um, I've said this time and time again that I just have a skin tone that can't carry contour shades, so I just use bronzer shades, and I know so many people feel passionately about that, but I wonder if those people have super like yellow golden undertones because it looks so muddy on me, I just can't, and it looks so obvious, so I just can't. So bronzer it is, and I'm just gonna take this down the bridge of my nose. Okay, so so far I would like it to be closer pinched um, so I'm gonna have to try bring it in even closer and then I always do the tip that is a little strong that looks a little harsh but what I am gonna do is clean up a whoa that looks crazy in the camera oh my gosh ah, what have I done what have I done okay let's just soften it a little bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Patrick Tarp and my one size um, pressed, turn up the base press powder foundation. And I'm just going to try carve around the nose contour. Okay, while that's setting, I'm going to dust off what I did out here, which is essentially the same thing. I use my Patrick um, Tar powder just to clean up under my eyeshadow. Okay, I'm just gonna dust that away now. How does it look? How does that look on camera? Does it look all right? I mean, it looks a bit crazy in real life, TBH. I don't know, it just doesn't look very soft. Let's get into the Patrick Tarte She's Passionate Blush, because that could help tie this together, potentially. I am so excited about this. I don't know, the Patrick Tarte brand is one of those brands that's just getting me really amped on makeup at the moment in my opinion they're doing such a great job and I'll have a video coming up on the major dimension palette soon because I got my <laughs> got my sticky little fingers on those favorite blush brush is the JH06 and oh, I don't want to like mess up the embossing that's how much I love it and I'm gonna load it up pretty well hmm this one seems to be pressed a little bit firmly It's kind of a good thing because then you don't like put it on and then just have like a splodge of blush. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it is pretty. I always put a little bit of blush on my nose as well and I'm nervous that I'm going to make my nose contour look even worse. Now this eyeshadow palette doesn't have an inner corner highlight so I'm going to have to go hunt one down and I'll be right back. Okay, so one of my favorite inner corner highlights is Becca Moonstone. So that's what I'm gonna use today for my inner corner. 
So I also bought that ABH uh, Pro Pencil and I'm just going to show you how I use this as well. I think I am already showed, but I basically just rub it along, specifically the like high point and the outer tail because I find that to be the bit that can be like the messiest. Then I take my MAC 195 and I just blend it in. Just gives me a really beautiful crisp blend. Then I grab a blending brush and I just buff over it to make sure it's really beautifully blended. And then using that same opal shade as my peak spotlight brow bone highlight. Does anyone have one brow that's just like tremendously better than the other? That's me. Okay, that is it. That's a finished makeup look. Let's do my a little summary of my first impressions. Okay, my makeup is finished and let's do a quick recap. So the Dior foundation. I'm pretty impressed with, my only comment would be is it didn't have as much coverage as I was hoping for. And I somewhat wish, so I put my um, Givenchy Prisma Libre powder over the top and that powder is so good that I almost, I don't know if I'm loving this because I use my Prisma Libre or because this foundation is just that good, but I can comment on the fact that both of them together looks really, really nice. Um, it is very airbrushed looking, it is very flawless. I must say because of the price and because I have a slight feeling that the aerosol wastes a lot of product, I think it would be more like a special occasion type foundation because um, I'm just cautious that I seem, it seems like I might go through it quite quickly. How it stands up to my Holy Grail foundations, I will have to come back to, but my overall initial impression is that I do, in, I enjoyed this today. So that's a win on that one. The Natasha Denona Mini Bieber, I loved this, but I'm so shocked at how purplish it throws. I don't have anything like it in my collection, so I'm fairly certain I will keep it, but it's not a color story that I see myself reaching for extremely often. Um, they definitely show up on the eye different than they look in the pan. That would be my comment. I was very impressed with the cream to powder formula. It's much better than the cream to powder formula in the Metropolis palette. So that's a super big win there and I really enjoyed it. The only downfall of this is I really thought it was going to be like the most beautiful, perfect match with the Patrick Tarr um, blush. But because this shows up on the skin differently, they're not as close of a pairing as I was hoping, but I do think they look pretty together. Let me know what you think, but I think that they still look nice together anyway. The Patrick Tarr blush was beautiful, but it required a lot of building. Sometimes that's a good thing because you don't want to put your blush down and then you instantly have clown cheeks. So, but it just did require a bit of building. But other than that, that was lovely and I intend to fully keep that. The brushes, mm, I'm gonna need to keep playing with this one. I'm very, very, I'm, tr I'm so scared to look at what this footage looks like because when I look in my little screen, I'm like, oh my God, my nose looks crazy. Um, please sound off down below if I'm right or wrong in that. Um, but yeah, I'll keep having a go at this, but ultimately I think I may have loaded the brush up with too much product. I think it might be a dab and then go. Um, I also might have to like try and zoom in on that bit of the Kardashians where he used it so I can try figure that out. The Smith 253, <laughs> chef's kiss. I hate that I'm falling in love with expensive brushes, but she's a peach. What can I say? Absolutely loved that. And the 317 wing liner. Now this is a hair thicker, a hair thicker than my MAC 263. Wait, let me check if that's the right number. Yep, than my MAC 263. But that's actually not the worst thing because I have a lot of lash line that I need to cover up. So sometimes with this one, perhaps it's like too skinny. But they are a great dupe. This one is just a hair, a hair fatter. But for the amount that you're going to save, I think it's worth it. Um, so I'm happy with that purchase as well. So overall, from what I used today, it was quite good. I will just let you guys know that I'm, I'm, I didn't use this one today, but I've been using it. And I'm nervous about this one. And I will post back soon because it's so silicone -y. And then it's got glitter in it. It's just like, oh no. That was ultimately a bit of a win today. I am enjoying how my makeup looks. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great week, weekend, wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.